Oops, Shibuya did it again. So, just to give you a background, this year, Shibuya became the first Japanese local government to recognize same-sex partnerships. While it seems like a great improvement, it actually isn't much so. First, it costs money to get your partnership recognized. Second, recognizing same-sex partnerships is pretty much all they do. So, like, there's no real legal benefits or regulations or any kind of structural changes being made. So I have no fucking idea why some people are so happy about it. On top of that, Shibuya is very infamous for its anti-homeless policies and their self-contradictory uh, attitudes towards different types of minority people has been criticized and this time Shibuya did it again. So here's the photo that circulated uh, in the online LGBT community in Japan in the past couple days. As you can see, there's a man here and a woman there and in the middle is some person split in half and it represents one of the binary genders and there's rainbow all over. It also has uh, pictograms for uh, the wheelchair rider, the old person, the pregnant woman, and the person with the little kid. But what's up with this little rainbow person here? What does it mean? So instead of sharing my response to it with you, I will show you uh, some of the tweets that I found that were critical of the new pictogram. So Ichikawa Yusan says, I embrace the idea of making bathrooms accessible and I love to see such efforts everywhere, but can someone please fix this design? Nagaya Sushibun-san says, So this is the new bathroom sign at Shibuya Water Buildings. Isn't something just off here? I am not compatible with anyone who feels this is wonderful. Quote unquote wonderful. So there's this rainbow person somewhere out there, non-male, non-female, non-disabled, or non-old. Drag queen Margaret says, why not just toilet instead? Spomen Osaka-san says, this picture I'm made by Shibuya of a rainbow colored man plus woman divided by two means what? Niaru-san says, sorry but personally I don't want to use this bathroom. Ima Masato-san says, I feel sad considering that this man's blue, woman's red kind of representation was criticized some 20 years ago. Tombo says, I'm sure Shibuya doesn't care about the voices of trans people because for them showcasing the stunt and winning the leading position in LGBT enlightenment are more important I guess. Takasaki Rap says, it's cool to have rainbow in images and everyone instantly likes it. How Facebook is that? Wada Mitsuhiro-san says, I'm guessing it was made by some ally employees at the ward, but wasn't it Nijiiro Diversity that provided the whole LGBT lectures and workshops for Shibuya employees? Shonen Brenda says, it's not only weird on the design level, but also on the ideological level. You know there are LGBT people who are wheelchair users, pregnant women, parents and old people. Mitsuhashi Junko-san says, What the fuck? Transgender people are not some half-man, half-woman creature with rainbow clothes on. This symbol reminds me of the early 20th century circus freak show. If they knew that transgender people have always been represented and discriminated against as half-man, half-woman, they wouldn't have come up with this design. Jesus Christ says, What I want is a bathroom that I can comfortably use without fear without people asking me questions. Definitely not a segregation bathroom where we are put into a special category. It's just a place to shit. Our shit isn't rainbow colored. So much for diversity show off. I have no business down in Shibuya, but it annoys me to see those glowing faces saying, look, here's diversity, we're with you, rainbow people. OMG, we are so friendly, look, look. That's just so off and masturbatory. What do they think we are? Stupid? Shimizu Akiko-san says, Neither LGB or T represents anything like half man, half woman at all. This design can even backfire as it subtly illustrates how they want to exclude sexual minority people from the binary gender categories of man and woman. Kaneta-san says, It's high time we liberate ourselves from the gendered clothing code that says pants for men, skirts for women. 
and a gendered color code that says blue for men, red for women. And finally, Endo Mamita-san says, Do transgender people really want this? I personally believe that it's better to have a plain, accessible bathroom that doesn't stand out like this. And transgender people aren't simply neither a man or a woman in the first place, except for some. We just need to pee and poop. And what bothers us is other people confused about our genders. Just adding the rainbow person in the image won't do. What I want is to abolish the meanings attached to genders. I just wish that when people discuss support for LGBT, they would listen to transgender voices. Especially in case of the bathroom problem, for most LGBT people, it's not even their problem. And as you can probably tell, those are not literal translations of what the original tweets, individual tweets said. Sometimes I combined uh, bits and pieces from multiple tweets by uh, the same person. So please refer to the originals. Uh, rather than my translations. So let's see what this Higashi Koyuki-san person uh, has to say about the picture. And she is probably the most famous lesbian woman uh, in Japan right now because she got married to a woman in Tokyo Disneyland. Um, not legally, but you know, uh, they did the wedding. Um, anyway, so Higashi Koyuki-san here says uh, with the uh, photo of the sign on her Instagram. The accessible bathroom at Shibuya Awards temporary building. Wonderful design. Hashtag LGBT, hashtag Shibuya. Of course she approves. She, of course she does. Why not? She is one of the people who almost got the good design award for the ordinance, the same-sex partnership ordinance of Shibuya, for some reason I have fucking no idea. Of course she approves. And additionally, she and her partner were the first couple to get their partnership recognized by Shibuya. With all the media attention and, you know, again, you know, because of the, you know, for the first time being the wedding you know, at Tokyo Disneyland. I mean, I don't, I'm not, like, I don't have anything against them, you know, as in, to individuals in love or in whatever. If they're happy, well, even if they're not happy, I'm okay, but if, you know, if, if that's what they want to do, you know, why not? Go ahead. But this media attention, the disproportionate amount of media attention being paid to the couple is dangerous for advancing activism, LGBT activism, and queer activism, and then even even maybe like feminist activism, because you know marriage is an institution, social institution that controls our lives, right? I and mean, the feminists have a long history of fighting patriarchy. And with the introduction of the idea of gay marriage and gay partnership, the family as a system became suddenly sort of like a progressive cause, right? And I've seen a lot of feminists going like, whoa, happy wedding for gay couples. And I'm like, okay, so my feminism and yours are like, you know? so. Gay marriage, gay partnership, uh, or any kind of you know civil union, whatever, um, they are changing the environment where um, queer and feminist activists have to operate. So if the media keep paying a disproportionate amount of attention to couples, gay couples, lesbian couples who are willing to do what a lot of heterosexuals do. It's gonna be harder and harder for people like me who oppose the institution of marriage, and I also have friends and 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 non friends as well um, who oppose the institution of marriage. And I don't think it's gonna be easy for us unless we do something about it, right? So 
So this is me trying to do something about it. I am talking to you, but at the same time, I am also talking specifically for the Western media. That's why I'm speaking English today, right? I've seen some crappy work done by the Western media, especially uh, Western queer or LGBT media. Basically, what they do is they either come to Japan or uh, give a phone call or whatever to reach um, people from Japan, and they choose potential interviewees and they ask a couple questions and and in in selecting. Uh, interviewees, they tend, for some reason, to choose celebrities or uh, people who are already famous, who already have media outlets, right? No grassroots activists, no older generations of activists, sometimes even no trans activists, no bisexual activists, no woman activists, you know, it's I've seen very bad work done by the Western media and I'm I'm kind of furious about it. I'm mad at them. And that's why I wrote a blog about it, uh, read before you write about LGBTQs in Japan or something along that line. I'll put the link in the description. It's just horrible how they treat different cultures in their media and apparently uh, Higashi Koyuki-san and her partner uh, Hiroko-san they have sort of like made to become the poster child of LGBT Japan or queer Japan you know whatever that means so a small portion of me feels sorry for them and the vast majority of who I am doesn't because they make a lot of money they get paid for what they do they get paid for what they say I am not suggesting that uh, Higashi-san's tweet was sort of a commercial act you know I don't I think I am 80% sure that her tweet was her honest opinion well, I'm actually 99% sure because she's the kind of person who feels okay with that kind of picture. But anyway, this video, um, it's my first time attempting to do a sort of like a vlog thing. Um, not ever, but uh, for the Queer ESL project, this is my first time and I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know if this video would mean anything at all, but I decided I wanted to do something to show the world, or at least the English-speaking world, that queer voices in Japan are fucking diverse. So if you're a journalist working for uh, some kind of English language LGBT media company and, and, and trying to cover Japan, don't you ever, ever interview celebrities. Unless, you know, interviewing celebrities is sort of like the central idea of your article. You know, it's, you know, in that case, I will let it slide. But, you know, if you just want to show the English-speaking world what queer people in Japan are thinking, then don't interview celebrities because they are paid for what they say. They are paid for what they do, right? That's not journalism if you do that. I know what it's called. It's, it's, it's publicity. You are becoming the PR person. You don't want to be the PR person suddenly um, for some Asian celebrities you don't know shit about, right? And, and, and of course you're doing it for free, you know? I mean, you're getting paid from your company, but you know what I mean? It's, it's just so wrong. I don't know how things work in the world of journalism, but I am sure that respecting the truth and also respecting a wide variety of realities that um, might be uh, experienced by people are very important in journalism. Well, I hope so. 
So, I'm asking you, don't ever interview celebrities if you're a journalist. Because that just, that's just wrong. Don't be the PR person. Don't be the publicity expert. Be a journalist. I don't have anything against journalists per se. I just w wish that they were better at covering other cultures. And that's unfortunately not the case right now. Sorry, I went on and on and on and on. If you're tired, I understand. If, you're, if you have already left, I understand. But I, you know, you didn't, you didn't hear that. Anyway, so thank you for watching. I will be back with a lesson video uh, probably next week. I hope you have a good weekend. Thank you so much. Uh, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, share on Facebook, and uh, subscribe to my channel. And, and, and see my previous video up there. Bye!